could take care of us. Dad set up his own construction company in California, so he only pays his own medical now that he's self-employed. Mom does work hard and long hours, but sometimes she takes it out on me, especially when she comes home tired. Lately, I've been taking care of Grandma instead of vice versa. Hey, it's not my fault Dad left. Maybe Mom treated him mean the way she treats Grandma or bossed him around the way she always bosses me around. Sometimes I wonder what it would be like living with Dad. July 11th. I didn't write about this yesterday because I'm still shaking. When we got home from the library yesterday, we couldn't find Grandma anywhere. Zach checked in the basement and Timmy looked in the backyard. I ran through the house screaming, Grandma, where are you? After about 15 minutes, I really started to panic. Zach said we should call Mom at work, but I said to wait and see if we could find Grandma first. Just then, Timmy ran in, saying that a police car had stopped in front of the house. I ran out the door, and it felt like my heart was in my throat. The policeman asked if this was the O'Malley house. I told him we were the Ryans. He asked if an elderly woman lived here. I said my grandma did, but her name is Margaret Murphy. He looked puzzled, but opened the back door of the cruiser. Grandma stepped out, and we all ran and hugged her. I hadn't noticed anyone in the back seat because of the tinted windows. We all held each other laughing and crying at the same time. The policeman walked us to the door and asked to speak to me privately. I told Zach to get Grandma some iced tea and cookies and that I'd be right in. I stood in the yard and the policeman said someone had called the station to report an elderly woman who was wandering around and seemed to be lost. When he saw her and stopped the car, she told him her name was Margaret O'Malley and she was going home to the folks. He checked and there were no O'Malley's in town. I told him that her maiden name was O'Malley and that she had Alzheimer's. I said that when we got back from the library, she was missing. He asked me for mom's work number, but I asked if I could tell her when she got home and then she could call the station. He said, okay, just make sure she called today. I asked how he figured out which house Grandma lived in, and he pointed to a kid on a bike across the street and said, Joey there helped us out. He thought she lived here. Great, just another reason for Joey to make my life even more miserable. I got a postcard from Susie today. Her friends had been gone for a month, both of her girlfriends. The boys are totally hunky. The crafts are pretty junky and the food tastes really funky. I can't wait to tell you all about Mike. I made you something, so don't let me forget to give it to you when I get home. I'm taking loads of videos so we can have a video camp night when I get home. Miss you lots, thugs and hisses, Susie. Great. Susie gets a hunky boy. All I get is a junky crap. <laughs> sure seems quiet around here without the boys and all their friends. I'm not complaining though. It's a rainy, yucky day out. Everyone seems to be having fun except for me. I guess I'm having cellar thoughts in my attic room. Dad called last night. He said Zach and Timmy are having a blast. There's a swimming pool at the apartment. And when Chloe is working, Zach and Timmy go to a boys club down the street to play games and sports. When I talked to them, the only thing they seemed to miss was a clubhouse. They both asked how it was. They said Dad was taking them to Marine World one day and in a ferry into San Francisco another. <clears throat> Dad asked me how my charge was. I guess he meant the person I was in charge of. Just then, I looked across the room at Grandma, who was pulling the mirror almost off the wall. It was like she was trying to get to the other side or something. Grandma threw the looking glass. <laughs> Mom and I are worried she might pull it right off the wall and get hurt. I told Mom if Graham breaks the mirror, she'll have seven years of bad luck. 
Mom said, that's all we need. <laughs> we ended up taking down the dining room mirror and putting up a picture instead. August 4th. This is so bizarre. I had just mentioned Aunt Rachel in my journal, and she called here today. Mom and Aunt Rachel are very close, even though she's Dad's sister. I remember when Mom and Dad's <coughs> divorce became final that Aunt Rachel said she got <coughs> custody of us. She's so cool. I want to be just like her when I get older. She's an artist who makes jewelry and pottery. When she called, I told her that Mom was still at work. She said, I know that. I called to talk to you. She said she was making me a deal I couldn't refuse. I could stay with her in a hotel on the beach in Rhode Island if I would help her set up her displays at the craft fair, sell things, and help her take it all down at the end. And then she added, oh, by the way, there's a jacuzzi on the balcony. Interested? I said, yes, I'm very interested, but um, I don't think I can go because of Graham, but I'll ask Mom. Aunt Rachel said, I know all about your grandma, the poor dear, and I also know how much you've been doing lately and about the trip you didn't get to take to California. Now your mom and I have it all worked out, so if it's okay with you, I'll pack up the truck on Friday and pick you up about 6 p.m., and we'll be lounging in the jacuzzi about eight-ish. What do you say, kiddo? Yes, 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 I screamed. August 9th. We got to the hotel about 7.30. It was unbelievable. There were two double beds, a TV, and best of all, a beautiful view of the ocean. We took a walk at low tide, and I picked up a lot of neat shells for Mom and Grandma. I even found some pieces of sea glass and green, brown, white, and one royal blue that Aunt Rachel said she'd show me how to make into a necklace or earrings. We went back in and changed into our bathing suits and sat in the jacuzzi. It was so relaxing. We watched the sun sink behind the hill and the sky turn every shade of gold, pink, and purple. Then the moon rose up over the water like a honeydew melon and slowly turned to white. I wish I could have painted it. And then Aunt Rachel asked how my summer was going. All I could think of was Graham, the boys at Dad's, and my two best friends who had been gone for a month. I started to answer, and all of a sudden I was crying and crying, and I couldn't stop. When I finally slowed down, I got the hiccups. Aunt Rachel said, can't you take you anywhere? You're drunk again. <laughs> that made me laugh. And, but then I started babbling about Grandma being jealous of Zach and Timmy and even my problems with Joey. She put her arm around me and said, Joey probably thinks you're a babe. I was laughing, but still shaky. So Aunt Rachel showed me how to breathe deeply the way her yoga instructor had taught her. I finally calmed down and Aunt Rachel said I was past due on my R&R. &R. I asked what that meant and she said rest and relaxation. Sounds good to me. Of course, that comes after you work your butt off for me tomorrow at the craft fair, said Aunt Rachel. I sat back and let the bubbles massage my back and shoulders, and it felt like all my bad feelings were floating away. After a while, Aunt Rachel said, Well, kiddo, we better get out of here soon or we'll end up looking like a couple of prunes. We got out, showered, and watched a little TV. I wrote in my journal then, while Aunt Rachel read her book. Today was a 10. <laughs> yes. That's your first author thing. Oh, good. So, so my question is, in your own journal that you kept, um, was a lot of the material for the book in your own journal from, from way, way back? There's a couple things, not very many. Not many. Are you going to do a sequel? <laughs> <laughs> so how much did it, the book change from you had it you said you had it sitting away in a manuscript form for many years and well um, how much did it change to um, get to this point i did change the ending a little bit someone had suggested um because i ended it at a certain point and she said she wanted to know 
a little bit about what happened after that, so I just added a couple, about six months later a few things. Other than that, just so the format was the same. Right. You still had a, you had a journal format before. And, mm -hmm. and, Yes, uh, how old is, is, is Meg? She's uh, she's 13 and turns 14 during the Okay, I wasn't quite sure. Uh, that's what I wasn't quite sure about. Um, did you find it a problem because you're, of course, you're telling everything from Meg's, Meg's point of view. Did you, did you sometimes feel um, frustrated that you couldn't tell it from uh, a, a viewpoint from some of the other characters, or do you feel that Meg could give descript, de descriptive enough passages in her journal so you got a clue as to how other people were feeling? It? I don't know. I, I guess I just wanted to tell her story, but that's, right. that's, yeah, I didn't think of that. Yeah, because of course the, we don't really know some of the inner thoughts of of her grandmother or her mother or her aunt or her. Or her, or her friends there, her school friends. I think some of that's reflected, though. Yes. Um, yeah. If you mean, if you can, say. you can bring it out by 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 recounting what they said or yeah. what they did, yeah. and you get yeah, that across. Did that a couple of times yeah. at the butler. Yes. She just she didn't take it as seriously as her daughter. I don't think it seemed that way. Well, you know, I think a thirteen-year-old girl. When she knows her mother's tired, she appreciates she's going through some stuff, but she's not in a position to really understand that because she's too young and she's not privileged to that information. So um, it, it wouldn't have been appropriate to over-describe, I think. That's probably true. Mm -hmm. So it was true and to the character and her age. And one thing that was in here and was true in my uh, life one time my mother got mad at my grandmother and, and I said something to her and she said, you know, my mother's lived with me my whole life. And um, she said, if your dad and I ever wanted to go out to talk to each other, we'd have to go out for a cup of coffee or something, you know, and you wouldn't think of that as a teenager, like that kind of stress But that was sometimes. illuminating and you, re and you remember that. Mm -hmm. It made an impression. Mm -hmm. Which you probably used here. Have you thought of a sequel? I think that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't answer. <laughs> yes, Doris. How old were you when she died? My grandmother died. I was in my twenties. Okay. At what age did your grandmother totally forget who you were? Or mm -hmm. you? She kind of remembered me the longest, and. Um, Sometimes I wondered if she thought maybe I was my mother, yeah. but she kind of remembered my name. Um, That's how you were closest to her. Yeah, I think so. Because I know my cousin's husband remembered her, mm -hmm. his wife, the longest. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he pretty much forgot everybody else, but he did know her. Mm -hmm. But uh, up until about a year before, my, before she actually died. She, she was always said she was going to kiss if she died first. <laughs> <laughs> and now, she Karen, definitely did. <laughs> what, I'm always, you, what age group did you, do you think this book is targeted for? Um, I would think maybe middle school. I yeah, I, you seem to think it was a younger audience than I thought. I have I have a couple copies at the Hood School Elementary School. Yeah, and a couple of kids have taken it out, and I'm reading it to a fifth grade right now. Yeah, um, seems to be okay with it. Oh, sure. I thought it might for high school. Probably things have changed a lot, so well, this would be pretty calm and dull. I would think for high school. Well, they may, but adults have read it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. It's very readable. Yeah. And, and not like you're reading a juvenile. No, either. I found that when I was reading it, I heard Karen's voice. Mm -hmm. uh, Did I had <laughs> a couple of people yeah. said that. It's, funny. It, it's, it's very strange knowing the author because you do. Mm -hmm. 
You proud of her? Oh, oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs>